Hello, 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 everybody. It's Brenda Schwader from Saurita Casita. Welcome, welcome to my last broadcast for the beloved John Bead Corporation in uh, Toronto area. Welcome here. This is my tutorial space um, here in my casita, and I'm so happy to have you here. I will. Okay. This is what we're doing today, you guys. We are going to be doing a lot of time. I um, We're going to have to kind of probably keep this to an hour because I think what happens is that um, my top-down camera, or at least we'll have to be done with that by an hour, it cuts out after an hour. It's like, yep, you should be done. Boom, it gets, kicks me off. Um, so we're going to be working with, this is the fill-it-in cuff. Here's what it looks like uh, before it's actually made into a cuff. So it's made flat. Um, it's made on the jig, but as with everything else, I provide two different templates, uh, one for now that's jig users and also one for uh, someone who just wants to make this flat. All of these cir circular forms are like eighth inch forms, so I've got it through three, three quarters, uh, five eighths, three eighths, uh, half inch, uh, and, and all on the corners, those are uh, one quarter inch. So uh, we'll show you how we go ahead and make that. and. Um, Hopefully, we can do a little bit of embellishing today because we didn't even get to that um, uh, once this is all bound together. So we got to get cracking here. Let me see if there's anything else that I want to cover. I think I've got it all. So we'll go back to, let's see if this kicks off. Yeah, there we go. All righty. So, by the way, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. Thank you for supporting me. I just absolutely love you guys. Um, if it's not clear, so I did resign from the Great Beat Extravaganza as well. As I said, I really want to laser focus on all of that. And so my teaching, um, at least that kind of teaching, has kind of come to a little bit of a sabbatical at least. I never, I li never like to say never <laughs> because it just doesn't sit well with me. Okay, so you guys, today we're going to be working with, uh, let's do the top-down camera here, and we'll get into this. So we're going to be working with these. These are earth jewels uh, from uh, John B. They come in these cool 100-gram packs. They are so awesome. So this one will, this is the turquoise green, but I thought since um, we're you know, kind of signing off, we would do something fun, and Carmi sent me these to work with. These are turquoise magnesite, okay, so these are dyed, um, but semi-precious stones dyed 100 uh, mil grams, I don't want to say milligrams, it's like I'm a pharmacist or something, and all by John Beat. I love how they kind of just made this cute little mix, which is just so nice for a project like this when you're trying to, um, you know, get a lot of variety into your pieces. So we're just going to put that there for now. Um, because I want to make sure, let's let's go to here, and we're going to, uh, yeah, we'll switch that around in a second. Just give you, for those of you who aren't familiar with these broadcasts, here are the instructions you'll get from John Bede, um, PDFs and projects from John Bede. These are free again, so these are all, you can see how everything is written out for you nicely. Plus, you're going to get this guy. And what I did this time, because this is all so convoluted, uh, is I'm giving you this, uh, this in two steps. So you can kind of see here. And then what uh, Sarah did is she um, kind of like the first step is, um, is, is kind of like scaled back. Uh, there's... Um, it's ghosted, I guess. Um, and then um, you will uh, you'll have both so that it'll be easier to read. Today, I'm going to be working on the jig because, you know, it goes faster for me. And you guys know how to find all these forms and stuff. Plus, what you can do is you can just, even if it's not exactly perfect, all the better, right? All the better. All right. Let me see, let me see if I'm going to follow this little guy here. I'm going to put that off to the side. If you're, um, a, now that's a jig um, yeah, person, artist, um, I usually just like to try to, uh, what we do is is we copy these off on vellum paper and we put them over the, um, over the jig top. But... 
since I did this R and D, um, I just I'm just using it without. And, but also, I like to have one of these uh, on the side too, just for good measure, just to kind of follow along. Because sometimes a few things get kind of covered up um, when you put the actual pegs in them. So, um, what I did was I am going to. What am I going to do? I'm going to cut off like 60 inches of this. Um, what colors I used for this particular one right here, let's take this and go here. And you guys, please do ask questions. I'm going to put my comments over here so I can see. Oh, thank you, Fran. That's so sweet of you saying for following my dream. Yeah, I mean, I've kind of always been doing the dream on the side, but the dream became the side hustle. <laughs> and I don't like that. So here it is flat. Okay, so this is what we're making. So you're seeing basically in the 12 gauge, this is the copper color. It's uh, the copper tone, or the no, the skew for it is the O2. Um, and then we have, we're working in both the um, 12 gauge and the 18 gauge, which is the two gauges uh, that the um, aluminum comes in. And guess what? I forgot. I forgot to give you the skews. So let's go ahead and grab those. Do, 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 do. Aha, here they are. And I'm going to put the turquoise in here and uh, the two types of, of aluminum wire just in the same one. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put that down here. I love this format. If you guys go live, uh, you should try StreamYard. It's pretty good. It's got some glitches and what I what um so instagram hasn't made it um hasn't quite cooperated with with streamyard as far as making it available to that but um yep so those are all of your little bitly things for um following today so those are all that this is for um this this kind of um here <laughs> That turquoise one is for this magnesite version, not the green, but you could kind of find it in there too, I believe, if, once you get in there. I think I think that one uh, would also be uh, easy to find. So today I'm going to be working with the teal, and that skew is the same as uh, the others in the first place, but then the color part of the skew is dash 07 for those of you who are into skews. Maybe you're into skews. <laughs> I have become I have become quite the skew um, skew person. Oh, that's twelve gauge. Oh, that's eighteen gauge. <laughs> so, please do, um, Debbie. I see you here. Thanks for coming, popping in. I see that you're here. I didn't see you at first. And Kara is here. Hi, Kara. Very cool. There we go. I think we've got everyone. Looks like the posts. Um, yeah, it looks like it. We might not. Uh, you, if you are watching on uh, Brenda Mike Schwader, for some reason I don't think those posts are going there. So if you're having any problem at all, um, I know that they're going to Brenda Schwader Jewelry. Uh, they're also going to John Bead Corporation, um, and um, now that's a jig. So, all right. So I'm going to lop off 60 inches, and you know me, I'm going to lop off more than that. And I'm getting impatient, so this tag is coming off. <laughs> it's Mark Teal, but I had it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's see. So we'll do a little bit of thing like this. Yeah, that's about 48. We'll do another thing. 60 inches is, is quite a bit, as you well know. Hopefully it will be cool. All right. So what I'm going to do is I am going to just find my center area for this. This particular, um, we're just going to find the center right here. And as we go down to here, uh, you can see we're been working on the jig here. We're just going to tip it up so you can kind of see what I'm doing. 
And again, these are a quarter inch right here in the corners. We've got a three quarter, we've got five eighths, we've got halves, and then these are the three eighths. And um, you can do, as the instructions say, you can kind of follow these or you can kind of do whatever you want. Basically, this is to give you on the corners to give you some anchor points, right? Um, and then inside you can basically do whatever you want. And so it's kind of a fun thing to do a blank um, because then you can attach anything, crystals, beads, gemstones, anything that's drilled. Um, even found objects, which I think might be fun. Okay, so I'm just sort of holding the centered piece right up here, and I'm just going to make go very quick, not quickly, but I'm going to go very tightly around here. Um, as I've said 25 times, <laughs> it's really easy to um, to bend the aluminum. That's its superpower. It's so easy to form. Um, but it's also very soft, so you're not going to want to, you know. Um, it's just not the type of thing that I think would 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 hold up to, um, you know, having be like a ring or something like that. Earrings, brooch, something else, the necklace, um, you know, not one that you're going to have a, a toddler tugging on, perhaps. <laughs> but otherwise, it's really pretty cool. All right, so. What I've done here is I'm just going to leave this one sort of out of play over here. And um, I'm going to come all the way down and I'm just straightening this with my fingers. But if you do have um, this cool, cool, um, you know, nylon jaw pliers, you can definitely look at how beautifully that just sort of straightens that whole thing out, especially since it's anchored here already. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go all the way around this bottom corner. You can kind of see how I'm anchoring this to get a nice corner there. And then I'm keeping that all at that same uh, area down here. All right. Also like this, straightening it out. And this one, I'm not going to go all the way around. It just kind of gets that, that we kind of want to keep the corners a little less built up. So, but I'm going to go around the peg up here. And then this is where we're starting to make the loop seats. This is what I'm calling the loop seats. So basically, we're making these, right? All these circles in here. And this is where we can, right, form a little seat for whatever we're doing. Um, you know, so obviously we don't want that. Well, we could put this one there because what we're going to be doing is tying these in. We'll show you that in a little bit. But I'm making the loop seats. So um, we're going to be going all the way around this half inch peg here. And you know what I did is I just put these sizes here, you guys, because um, this is what mostly people would have. If you have, I try to be cognizant of what people would have as far as their pegs in their pack. If not, just substitute something else that sort of fits in. Do your own thing. So here's a 3 eighths. You can see I'm just sort of like making sure these are nice and smooth. I'm going to kind of come up and around, but I'm making sure without poking myself that these are all kind of on the same plane here. And what I usually do is grab like just kind of keep these tugged together, forcing those around so they're not spiral staircasing up because that's what's going to uh, make an ill form, right, around them. So here and the, here I'm going to go up to this five eighths of an inch peg here, all the way around that. So it, it's so beautiful. If you have hand issues, man. This wire is the wire for you. And then I'm going to go all the way up and I'm going to go all the way around this upper left hand one. And I have way too much wire left over, but as I have told you before, I have lack of wire phobia. <laughs> so, and I'm just going to kind of cut off, not really too, I just want to get that out of my way because it's so much more wire. All right, now I'm going to get this one back in play, you guys, and I'm going to come down. Basically, I hope I do this right. 
I'm going to come all the way down to this one. Now this one is the one we didn't go all the way around. We just went around the outside. So this one we're going to go all the way around so that we have just kind of a nice uh, anchor. And yep, this side we're going to go around the bottom. And then this time we're just going to go around the corner instead of going all the way around because remember we went all the way around in this one before. So I'm going to kind of come up here and then basically I'm just going to fill in the ones that already aren't done. Okay. I'm just, like I'm just going around every peg once. And so I'm going around this five eighths inch one right here. I'm going to come up and go around this three, three quarters inch and kind of see that it kind of puts that one down here. I'm going to, just for fun, I'm going to come up and around the other direction from this one, sort of like, just kind of like, like um, spiraling around, meandering. And we're going to come up and around this one. So hopefully you could see that all right. See, we went from this one here, and then we went around, kind of went up that one. And around here and then here. And the pattern will show you the direction of what we call our wire path. For those of you who are stitchers, you know all about thread paths. We have wire paths. Okay. So here, I just kind of want to make a cute little kind of X here. And so we're going to come from the middle and we're going to go out on this. And I'm just going to come all the way around, but I'm just going to kind of snip off some of that wire there. So here we go. We've got our form, you guys, right? And so it's basically the same as this one that I have already started here. Um, and you can kind of see how it comes off. I will show you how to do those, um, those clips. Remember, all these videos uh, are still going to be uh, uh, up on um, the, the sites. Uh, quite a few are on my YouTube channel. Our French sweater jewelry, now that's a jig, lots of places. And also the Great Beat Extravaganza. I think they're going to keep my videos up there. I think those are listed under, under files there as well. Okay, so what I'm doing, you can see where the wire starts to overlap itself. What I want is I want to be able to push that loop down so that it's not, you know, it's not uh, overlapping at all. So I'm going to go just before where it starts to overlap and just trying to do it as much on an angle as I can with the back of my uh, pliers. And then you can see that I could push that down no problem even with my fingers because it's aluminum and I don't have, I just have a really nice form. Okay. Push that one down too. So you can see well, this is what starts to happen. It's like, woo, woo. so this is why we have to go and do our anchoring. But this is, this is what it looks like when it comes off, you know, you have sort of all this stuff going on. Um, and so you're going to have to wrangle a little bit uh, if you want. Now, one of the ways you can wrangle it is what I've done here is by taking the matching, um, you know, uh, 18, 18 gauge and doing all this stuff. But let's do something different today. And you can kind of see this path. I mean, basically, you're starting at one of the corners. I want all of the corners to be sort of this, um, you know, anchored. But since you're, if, especially if you're going to be doing um, a lot of, uh, filling in a lot of these spaces, you're basically sort of going to be anchoring this uh, as well. Unless you like this look, which is sort of sort of a loopy, almost kind of like a westerny look, right? Ropey, ropey, loopy look. Uh, but let's, let's go ahead and show you another way to do this as well. And I thought what I would do is show you in a contrasting wire. Um, what I did is I picked up um, some green wire and we'll work with that um, so you can see kind of an alternate way of doing it as well. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of take and and use a lot of the um, 
I'm going to do all the corners. And I don't know where I was going with that other sentence I trailed off on. Sorry. <laughs> so I'm just pick, you know, I'm just kind of doing like, I don't know, like little six inch pieces. Let's take that one and get that out of the way. I like to work with the uh, nylon jaw pliers at the ready for this kind of work. Stacy, Stacy says, how sweet. Uh, here for the first time, but have been a long time follower. Where can I find the PDF of this bracelet? Thanks. Thanks, Stacy. Um, I know Coral, aren't this and that combination nice? So basically what is happening is that you'll go to the John Bead. It's called PDFs. Where is it now? Let me let's just let's just go back. Um, you're going to go to uh, John Bead Facebook group. It's called Bead Projects and PDFs from John Bead. Bead Projects and PDFs from John Bead. Okay. And that's on their fa on Facebook. So, so here I'm going to anchor these two, and I'm going to anchor this these two. And I'm not I'm not enjoying how this anchor is. I think I'd rather go from the other corner. So let's go. When I started this, I didn't like that. All right. And so we're just going to take this whole thing off and start over again. Now what I will, this will take a little bit of practice too, but you want to definitely uh, be careful with this wrapping because you're basically sort of wrapping into that outer color. Um, and we want to make sure that that stays, um, you know, kind of bite free. <laughs> so you can see what I'm doing here. This one goes over here. So I'm just kind of making a stitch and trying to keep everything nice and tight. And I want to probably stay on that corner. And I'm going to grab a ch chain those players and just really Give that a tug. You can see how it's it's got some air in there. Let's see if it it'll show you. Yeah, right there. So I'm trying to get work from both sides. Okay. And if we have to, we could go down and just onto the side. Okay. so that everything is nicely lined up. And I might do a little nudging here to kind of keep everything nice and clean and tidy. And kind of move that into alignment there. What you probably want to do is uh, definitely once you sort of get this into place is to uh, have those cuts be something that ends inside so that you're not um, you're not in danger of poking anyone with your with your stuff or yourself depending on who you make your stuff for right now I say okay so you know that um, aluminum might not be your ticket um, or your customers ticket um, so you take all of the all the stuff you're learning here and you do it with the wire of your choice. Maybe you love copper, maybe you love sterling, maybe you are a gold wire person. If you are, I want to meet you. <laughs> all right. So you sort of get the idea there. And I'm just probably not going to be quite as fastidious so that you guys get the idea of what's going on here. So I'm just going to do these two corners and then I'm going to just kind of show you how to go ahead and embellish. Whoopsie. Whoa, 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 whoa. I got something in my lap here. The cutter. Good thing that didn't go down. 
<laughs> so you can kind of see what's going on there with the green, right? I mean, and you might, if you like this, you might be like, yeah, I really kind of like that contrasting thing. It kind of, it, it adds a little bit of a fun, um, whimsical nature to it, right? I got everything going on in different areas here, so I'm just going to try to burnish this down into inside here a little bit. And I'm going to back this one off. So if you can kind of see where you want it to land, you can kind of just snip it before you get it down in there. And definitely do that. Okay. So you can kind of see here too, just by going through the whole around the whole thing. There were some points where I just wanted to kind of get that get these uh, these ends aligned here, so it, it sort of stayed within this uh, rectangle. But there's no no saying that you can't do something that's a little bit more free form, um, something a little more fun that way too. Oh, Fiend, hello! Oh, thank you. So nice to see you. Oh, good. I'm glad you found it, Stacy. Good, good, good. All right. So um, what I would say is that I'm going to tell you to go ahead and form this into a cuff before you start putting the, the, um, the jewels, bejeweling it. And the reason is because you have a different shape and a different, uh, just things are in different areas when they're formed into a cuff rather than they're flat. So um, let's see here if we can just, let's see here, show you how we're going to do this. I have up here, maybe if we just tip this up a little bit here, you can see my behind the scenes. There we go. So all of my mess you can see here. I didn't think that out very well. <laughs> This is actually a rotten oval man, uh, mandrel. And what I put in the, um, oh yeah, that's right, we're working from the back. What I put in the instructions is that basically you have, like this is a stepped mandrel, so you can see like this. I, I believe you would be able to get this, oh my gosh, off of micro tools, try there. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a lovely one. Um, but basically what you want is you want to think about an oval, right? Not, not a bangle. We're not making a bangle because you want the ends to sort of go over your wrist. And so I'm just going to, and basically what you want is everything to parallel around. You want the whole thing to go parallel instead of going in a conical way. Okay. So in order to work for, at least for this design. And so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to center that here and I'm pushing on the whole thing and I'm just going to work my way up. Okay. Uh, and this is kind of a nice uh, amount here. And then here I'm just really kind of coming in um, on each of the ends so that everything is done kind of nice and synonymously. Um, I'm going to turn this around and show you. So this is pretty a pretty small cuff, okay? Um, but I also want to make sure all of my seats are following that whole plane of the curve, right? And um, kind of working that around as we go. You can even work it with um, a small hammer like we have, we've been working with. Um, but honestly, with the the aluminum, your fingers are really pretty good too. Um, and so here, let's push this back down here so we can kind of see and get away from the mess that was my studio. <laughs> let's see here. Did it go? Oh, it's still, I see what's happened. It went, I have to kind of readjust it to, to the horizontal. 
since I messed it up, I'm going to do that. Oh, and now I, what did I do? <laughs> Easiest way to get started. Oh, I moved myself off. Okay, well, we'll just get back on here. Go into StreamYard. That was I did two. I did some fancy work there, guys. Yeah, that is a mandrel, right? Oh, Sarah Shahak was here. I didn't even see you. I know it's. I don't even know why. She she's so sweet. And she's like she must wake up in the middle of the night to watch. She's so silly. Um. Okay. So I want that muted, and I want this camera to go to the back camera. Oh, come on. It says no camera access. That's a lie. What happened? Yeah, I tried to get too fancy. Oops. I'm entering a broadcast. That's good. Allow. There we go. I'm going to mute that. We're going to go back into here again. So sorry, guys. Things happen though, right? We're going to work with the back camera. Done, done, and done. Uh, back camera, I go off, enter studio. Here we go, there we go. All to get the right view. So, you know that my camera, my top down camera is my phone. And you know how that whole horizontal thing goes. So let's add this to the stream. There we go. We're back. Ta-da. Such fun. <laughs> Such fun. All right. For all that work, I need a drink of water. Mm. Oh, Fiend, you are so sweet. I will take all of the loving I possibly can get. Mwah, mwah, thank you. <laughs> all right. So I'm sort of like want to get to this this other area here. Now, here's the thing with the binding. The smallest aluminum wire, right, is 18 gauge. But we want to do some embellishments to it. And we cannot fit 18 gauge through or can we that looks like a big hole let's see if we can we're gonna try it <gasps> wow I just thought I just assumed we were gonna have to go with the uh, the other so let's just make sure we're gonna do a little spot check here now I would say something like this that's top drilled you can use these but imagine you're gonna anchor it down to one side right then this might be flipping up, so you might have to do a little bit of like Gulliver's Travels kind of a capture, like I taught in the last couple weeks uh, at the uh, Great Beat Extravaganza. So let's go ahead and oh, we're not gonna we're not gonna bind it with this. Let's let's do this. Oh, I'm excited now. <laughs> anyway, if if for some reason you have things that uh, that you want to, my favorite binding wire is like a 26 gauge or 28 gauge, just because you get a nice little tiny thing. It's more like a thread. You can you can just get in there and do nice secure things without mucking up, you know, uh, your area. But I would say, and I do say, that you would want it to match because you kind of want this to kind of go away. Unless you don't. Unless you like this kind of contrasty look. I'm not here to judge. Your stuff is your stuff. The Lord knows that I have my own look. And which is not always blendy any. Right? Right. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do on this, let's just have some fun here. Let's see, how long have we been going live? Yeah, we're, we're going to do a little bit here. Um, I kind of like this big old nuggety thing here. And then remember, we tried this one here. So I can kind of show you a couple things. Eh. You know what? I think I want them all to stay on top. So that's kind of a fun one, right? But I think maybe where are my big ones. What do we want? What do we want? Okay. 
so for to just get started what I'm going to do is basically take another little stitch I'm just going to anchor my wire onto one of these uh, the sides of one of these guys right and again I like to have my chain nose here at the ready and I like to also have my um, What is that? Nylon top play. <laughs> All right. And my cutter. I have done this kind of work in front of the TV. If it's something that is not very suspenseful that I can watch. Um, or that, you know, you may be just re-watching it from another time, binge watching something over again, which I know I'm not the only one that does. Okay. So I'm going to come up from the bottom. You kind of want to know what's your bottom and what's your top. So I'm going to come up here and I have that nice little, can kind of see these two. So that's my nice anchor. I would do at least two, you guys. Okay, let's add this, this nugget on. I feel like I'm from the 80s here. We're going to add some nuggets um, just to kind of work this southwest look if we can get through it. Didn't I just go through this one? Or was it the other one? That's so funny. Okay, you go back in. You lose. Okay. Aha. That might have been that we had a little bit of a um, funny edge there too. It likes... It like it has a very straight drill, so if, it, if there's any tension in there, that's it's coming from you know that. So I'm gonna kind of come up a little bit because I want this seated. I think this was my bottom. Okay, I'm pushing the whole thing back through because I wanted it on the other side. <laughs> it's nice of me to do things incorrectly so you can see how to to do them to fix it right you gotta know the, the workaround okay so I'm just gonna kind of grab this and kind of place it where I want it and I'm I kind of have an eye to where I want to be going next so I'm gonna probably be going here next so I'm actually going to do two things in one I could anchor right to here but since this one's so close I'm gonna anchor these together at the same time I'm putting this guy in does that make sense Carleen, hello, my love. How was Carleen today? Okay. So I want to make that nice, and I just smooth that out with my hands. Normally, with another type of wire, I would have already gotten that straightener in there, but again, it's aluminum. You kind of want to place it where you want it to be first before you start like jamming on it too much. Now here I could go around this twice, but once is really okay. And so here should I do like a little, there's a little round one that looks kind of cute on there. And so basically I'm going to add this one away over here. And so here's where your filling is going to go. Um, you know, it, it's going to go a little faster if you don't go around everything twice. If if you feel like you can kind of get away with that, and you're always going to want to keep sort of an open loop. It's easy to get things intertwined, right? And I'm just going to kind of go around here, and I'm going to go up to this one here and see. Now, because I started from the middle, like if you knew what your plan was, it would probably be a better idea to, um, you know, to go here, add this bead, or even add these two, come up to this one. You might want to wind around and kind of like work your way down. But I'm not good at thinking ahead. <laughs> So I didn't do that. All right, let's see here. Maybe we can get a nugget here. Ooh, that's kind of fun. 
Or maybe we want one of these cute little flat pieces. That's kind of fun too for a little variety, huh? So I'm just going to add this on here. Um, yeah. Because I didn't do my, my planning out. Um, actually, yeah, I kind of like this right here. But what I'm missing here is I don't have a full wrap around this one. Okay, so I'm going to go around here again. I was just like trying to cheat too much there, and it wasn't going to work out in the long run. Here I'm just getting a little warbly, so I'm going to go back in here with my straightener and also is going to strengthen that wire too for you. Oh, Carleen. I'm so sorry, honey. Are you kidding me? What did I do now? Oh. Okay. That's my lo that's my my latest like discipline to myself. Are you kidding me, Brenda? <laughs> All right. We just wanted to kind of come up through there, guys. So the moral of the story is, is that you basically want things anchored right on each side of the bead. Okay. So that's, that's what I'm just kind of like doing willy nilly on each side here. If you're wondering like, okay, why is she, why is she messing around so much? And because this is a little bit bigger than the seat here, I'm going to kind of just push it over itself over. And so I'm kind of like grabbing all that stuff. Um, just making sure everything is nicely anchored. Here we go. Okay. So you can kind of see I'm ending up going back this way. So I might just kind of just kind of just go through here. But you get the idea of how this is filling in. And yeah. I guess it really wasn't a very good front or back. I could have gone either way. I'm really liking how this looks with this. I was hoping that they had some silver to do that traditional silver and turquoise look. You know how that's all that all the Southwest jewelry, um, the classic stuff. But um, silver has been out of stock for so long because of COVID. So I've never had silver to work with. I don't know if you if you have noticed that. I've never mentioned this before, but we're just staying away from silver because there it's out of stock. There is. There is a silver color, obviously, um, but um, yeah. So I'm like, I kind of like this uh, copper look. And to me, it looks more bronze, which I like better than copper personally. So I'm kind of liking this combination. I think it's real pretty for Southwest kind of themed stuff. Okay, so I'm coming back up to, I worked my way around some adjacent wires, and I'm coming back up to this other little, this other little seat here making sure you want to kind of look at your back and make sure everything is sort of like in line there because you might have like a little extra bump or something in there. Um, so let's go ahead and put like a little or nugget maybe in here for fun. And yeah. So, oh, thank you, Cindy. Mwah. Thank you so much. Um, she said goodbye. Um, so basically, I'm kind of coming here, and I'm going to go down here and go in. 
I would like to, um, I probably won't get to this today because we're coming up on an hour, but I would like to just maybe put like a little button in here or, you know, this is probably too big because it's like something like this, but even like a little, a little something just to kind of give that a little punctuation down at the end there. Um, these are adorable. Look at these little hearts here. So cute. So you can kind of see see what I'm meaning here. Hi, Lynn Larkins. How's my friend Lynn? Oh, you guys, we had rain here yesterday. It was incredible. I think it was like a mini monsoon. I forgot to ask Jim. He, he got, I said, you're turning out to be a really good uh, good old man starter kit because he got himself a weather, one of those weather things, <laughs> a weather station. <laughs> so he can tell you what the winds were like, you know, how much rain we got and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So you can see this is a really nice start to this. I'm really sort of, not sort of, I am enjoying what we've got going here. So I probably wouldn't use these beads just because they're like drops, which is nice for the variety in here. But um, I might put this this uh, round one in here now because it kind of stuck. I, I didn't want to put this one in this one because it actually would fall through and it would be lower than the rest. And I wanted everything up, raised up, sort of that raised turquoise clunky chunkiness. Hi, Cynthia. Mwah. Um, so you can kind of see what's, what is going on now. Now here, I just pulled this and I, I did exactly what I told you not to do is I'm working it flat. So we'll have to see how it, it goes once it becomes a cuff. But, um, but yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of digging this and I'm kind of digging that I did all of this, um, this ropey type thing because it kind of gives me a Western, uh, like rodeo vibe. Um, we haven't been to the rodeo. We've lived here for almost uh, almost exactly, no, one month short, uh, shy of two years now. Can you believe it? And we haven't been to the rodeo yet. Well, of course, COVID kind of ruined that for everyone, but COVID. <laughs> the P word and the C word. Okay, you guys have been quiet. I haven't seen and too many questions about the project. But um, I hope that you are enjoying it as much as I am. It's uh, it's kind of one of those fun things. There is another um, a similar pattern. If you look on Etsy, it's um, like this. It goes from corner of the jig to the corner of the jig. Uh, so it's a little bit longer and it has more like a pointy end here. And that just gives you a little bit more um length. As you could see, this one makes a pretty small little uh, cuff. You know, it works on me. I have a fairly, a fairly small cuff, but a big paw, uh, a wrist, I should say. So it'll kind of do that. But you know what you can do too, is you can just actually create some sort of like a nice, a nice separate piece that would act as a door or some sort of a fancy, um, an extra piece right here um to that would be maybe like a double um double clasp in there um also i mentioned that this is also it could be a pendant so so let's say um you know you basically did like here or maybe you just wanted to add to like in here or something like that and make this into a pendant or maybe you want to select like a middle area you can select anything but basically you're just kind of working between um, some of these things, the areas, and you would just um, add a bale to the center of that up, up on top here. What I would probably do is I would go around here. So say that this was your top. I would go around here and I would put another uh, peg in here um, and go around, but as it be, and then when I, set, when I lifted it up, I would actually flip this one to the outside. That's a jig trick. Um, and so, um, so you have that built-in bale right there. I do not, um, is it Stamili, Paulette? Um, I do not, and um, that is actually another announcement that I need to make soon. We have been looking, I have been looking for, we, um, 
I work with a business um, consultant. Um, we have been looking and looking and looking, and we cannot just cannot find everyone. COVID just pretty much did us in at the at the end. But um, if you're lucky enough to have now, that's a jig. Congratulations. Um, but I don't believe we're going to be able to make those available anymore. They are for sale. Sometimes you can find a used one, unlike a jeweler's. Uh, D stash group um, and also if you go on to the Facebook group now that's a jig jiggy factors sometimes people will list um, those used ones that they might not be using uh, for sale sometimes people get them thinking oh I'm gonna use this and then it's just uh, you know it's kind of collecting dust in their in their studio so better to go to someone else so um, also um, so try on there so no I don't very very few pegs left on the site and again um, I'll be taking those down um, by the end of July and so there won't be any more now that's jig stuff on my Etsy site any longer um, so um, get those while you can um, there's just triangles up there singles and then sets of triangles um, and I think there's some individual eighths so if you need anything you want to stock up what's there is what's left so sorry, sorry about that. Make believe me, it uh, makes me very sad too. Um, but it is what it is, right? And it's one of the things I truly believe in the universe, uh, kind of giving you what you what is best for you, even though you might not know what is best for you. <laughs> and this is certainly things I have. The jig came into existence. Now that's a jig, my version of it, um, in 2012. So it has been, oh my gosh, I was stuck on seven years, 12, eight, nine years. Product came into existence nine years ago as of it would be nine years and this uh, coming up um, July. So it's um, it's eight year old product. What happened? <laughs> Kara's asking what happened. Um, are you saying about the jigs? I guess I'm wondering. The um, now that's a jig is not. It doesn't have electronics. It's not. It's not um, hard to manufacture, but it's hard to manufacture. And I was lucky. Oh, what happened about me? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> well, we'll go there instead. Um, yeah, so Kara, I'm basically, um, oh, thank Oh, that's wonderful. He is such a sweetheart. Andrew is. Um, so, so Kara, I'm, I'm actually going to stop doing these tutorials and doing the teaching, unfortunately, but I'm going to be uh, joining everyone um, through my Instagram um, lives and um, doing some things like that, just like I am after this one. And we're going to be looking at um, how to finish this piece here. Here's four different options of what to add. And uh, we're going to be going live. I am going to be going live. I don't know who this wee person is at 3.30 through Instagram. So I'm going to say goodbye to you and wish everyone uh, well. Please do join me. Um, I, um, I would love you to uh, go to, here's the Instagram um, handle. So if you just go to Instagram and search for Brenda Schrader Jewelry, all in word, I'm going to be, I do a ton of there. I do two to three posts per day, per day on there, so um, and then do lives from there. Um, but I also wanted to just leave you with this, and if I can find, uh, here it is. I actually was organized to lay today. Look at that, it's amazing. I'm gonna go down there, and just one more thing to say on comments. Bring comments back up. Oh, great. Thanks, Lois. I love you for that. She says she's already following me on, on Instagram. Um, and thank you for your interest, Kara. And here is my blog landing page. And you can register if you're not already registered for my uh, e-blog, which is basically a newsletter, right? So I hope that you can join me there. I used to post uh, almost like a daily journal. And then I discovered Instagram. 
um, which I love, 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 love. And so I'll probably be doing like once a week, once a month, something like that, just to kind of keep everyone abreast of things in case you didn't see things um, that were going on um, or you just weren't able to get to Instagram. Oh, thank you, Nadine. She said, um, all the best with my new venture. You're going to be great, of course, and you'll be so happy. I know. I'm already happy. So how can I not be, uh, how can I not be happy? <laughs> All right, my loves, it's 3.09. I am going to mwah, bid you adieu and um, just say thank you so, so much for watching me and for supporting John Bead Corporation um, these past uh, months. It's been a hoot. I've loved every darn minute of it. Let's see if I can get that banner out of the way. Uh, I loved every darn minute of it. Oops, that's straight down. And... Um, I just uh, wish everyone so much fun and laughter and love. Mm. See you later. Adios. See ya.